It's hard to believe, but Sonic Riders is now 15 years old. Funny seeing as how this game was released during Sonic's 15th anniversary, yet it was unlike anything ever seen before in the world of Sonic. It was the first racing game in the franchise since Sonic R on the Sega Saturn, but this one was a bit different from that. Actually, you could say it was very different from that. Before I get into how it came to be, let me tell you about a tech demo named Sonic Extreme, no relation to the cancelled Sega Saturn game. Visionscape Interactive, the company who developed Seablade and Tech Deck Bare Knuckle Grind, helped make the cutscenes for Sonic Heroes. It was this connection, along with Visionscape's intent to use their engine from Bare Knuckle Grind for other skateboarding games similar to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, that helped this tech demo come to fruition. This prototype took a week to make in May of 2003, and the prototype was eventually shown to Sonic Team head at the time, Yuji Naka. While Naka was impressed and enthusiastic, saying the project will move forward as a collaboration between the two development houses, this never happened. Once a design description was presented for a full Sonic Extreme, Sega, presumably not happy that the prototype was created without their knowledge, ended all communication with the studio and never responded to the full document. Thus, the prototype was nothing more than that. What I'd assume is that when Sega saw the pitch, they thought the actual studio behind Sonic themselves would be better at handling a Sonic racing game. That, combined with many requests from fans for a Sonic racing game since the then 9-year-old Sonic R was released, eventually led to today's game we'll be reviewing coming out. The original Sonic Riders, released on the PS2, GameCube, Xbox, and PC, on February 21st, 2006 for North America, two days later for Japan, March 17th, 2006 for Europe, and five days later for Australia. Said PC version was later released on November 17th, 2006 for North America, one week later for Europe, and March 29th, 2007 for Australia. This game was not only designed to appeal to Sonic fans, but fans of extreme sports games in general, like SSX and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. This was also Yuji Naka's last Sonic game he was involved in before leaving Sonic Team. Now I've talked about the third game in the series enough, but I've never talked about the other two games in the Riders trilogy, so why don't we fill that gap in? No better time than now! Let's go! Now, the story for this game actually consists of two stories that overlap with each other. Completing both of these will get a final story a la Sonic Adventure 2. You'll start with the hero story. From the hero's perspective, our heroes, consisting of the usual suspects, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, end up on a fateful encounter that brings them into a run with a group of thieves known as the Babylon Rogues. From there, our heroes are introduced to the world of Extreme Gear. Think like the hoverboard from Back to the Future Part 2. The hero story then follows them as they go through the EX World Grand Prix, set up by none other than Dr. Eggman, all while dealing with the rogues. Speaking of which, the other story focuses on the Babylon Rogues. They are an infamous band of thieves who've existed in the universe for many years. The name is a mantle passed down from generation to generation. The group consists of Jet the Hawk, Wave the Swallow, and Storm the Albatross, each being a counterpart to Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, respectively. Their story plays from their perspective as they go through the EX World Grand Prix and focus on their goals. There are several modes of play in Sonic Riders. Normal Race, which lets you race freely. Within Normal Race, you can do a Free Race, Time Attack, and a Grand Prix mode, which lets you race across 5 tracks to win the overall Grand Prix. Story Mode, where you'll play through the story I described. Mission Mode, which allows you to put your Extreme Gear skills to the test and is available after clearing the Hero's Story Mode. Tag Mode lets you play with a friend as you share a combined pool of air in a race, and Survival Mode, with two modes of play within. Survival Race, where you must get a Chaos Emerald and pass through gates while holding it for a certain amount of time to score, and Survival Battle, where you must be the last man standing. There's a good variety of single player and multiplayer modes to keep you coming back. The main races happen on closed circuit courses that have a set number of laps to complete before the race ends. Typically this number is 3. You'll start behind an electric blocker that goes down after the countdown goes from 4 to 0. Hit it before the countdown ends and you get shocked. I don't like this system as much as what's used in SSX, where there's a start gate, you hold on to it as it counts down, 
and you move automatically as soon as Go appears. The Extreme Gear acts like the aforementioned Back to the Future hoverboard. There are also bikes and skates with their own hover equivalents. You'll race against seven other competitors. You'll automatically accelerate as long as you have air in your tank. Air is the fuel for Extreme Gear. It gets depleted by racing, power turning around corners, and boosting. If you run out of air, you'll be relegated to running on the ground until you get to an air refuel station. The main way to get air is to perform tricks. You'll hold down the jump button, release at the right time, and then spin your character around with the analog stick. The closer you are to the edge of the ramp when you jump, the faster you spin. These tricks look insane, and you wish these boards existed so you could pull them off in real life. One last thing to note is that there are multiple types of classes amongst the racers. Speed type can grind on rails, flight can fly off ramps and go through accelerators, and power type can punch certain objects out of their way. Each of these allow characters of that class to gain air, and even access shortcuts that others can't normally access. Now the gameplay itself sounds simple enough, but it's actually much tougher than it appears to be. Like, no joke, this is probably one of the hardest racing games I've ever played. The main thing is the rubber banding AI. It seems no matter how well or bad you do, the AI is always riding you throughout the race. They'll always use class types and shortcuts to get the edge on you, and they never seem to mess up unless you boost into them which lets you attack them. Some of the tracks can also be quite difficult. The first couple tracks are pretty easy to get through, but they get tougher as you keep progressing. The base tracks also each have their own tougher counterpart to them. Best thing to do is to utilize the class abilities and get an edge on your opponents. Again, like in Freeriders or even F-Zero GX, it's a learning curve. In spite of its difficulty, the controls do help since they work very well. Everything is responsive as it should be. Movement is easy to grasp and the class moves are simple to pull off. Though the grind requires two jumps to get on a rail, which doesn't always go well, and the flight class takes some getting used to. Once you get it down, it's pretty easy to do though. Boosting and tricks also work well, and the game is pretty easy to pick up, but difficult to master. Graphics also look pretty good. Being an end of 6th gen title though, it doesn't push the systems as much as something like Shadow of the Colossus, but that's putting the game in a different league. For what it offers, Sonic Riders looks pretty good on the whole. Character models have that sort of cartoon look to them as you would expect for the universe, and models look fine, albeit less detailed. Tracks also look good. Each have uh, pl plenty of details to look for, cool designs that help them stand out, and the design of them are challenging at times with plenty of secrets to find. The extreme gears also look detailed and have plenty of cool designs for the most part. Sound is also pretty good. With a part futuristic look, the game has matching futuristic sounds. From the air tank increasing slash decreasing to the power sliding and air refueling, the sound effects match the game's design. The music is also pretty good. There are several tracks that you may be listening to on your own time because the pumping techno is that good. Voice acting is pretty good as well. I feel that the four kids sonic voice actors get too much crap and anyone that was green around the edges really came into their own by this game at the absolute latest. Should you want to switch to Japanese voices, you can't in the GameCube and PAL PS2 versions. The Xbox version does that stupid thing that all Sonic games did that gen and in where you have to set your console language to Japanese to do so, non-PAL PS2 versions of the PC version can switch to Japanese voices without issue. The game also has plenty of replayability. There's plenty of characters and tracks to unlock, and as you race in normal mode, you earn rings that you can spend on more extreme gear to buy in the shop. Mission mode will also keep you busy as there are plenty of missions, which completing all of them will unlock the guest characters, Ai Ai from Super Monkey Ball, Knights from Nights into Dreams, and Ulala La from Space Channel 5. Plus, there are hidden boards to unlock in this mode that can't be otherwise unlocked. Sonic Riders is a pretty good racing game that is tough and has quite the learning curve with a mess start race system, but if you can pull it off, there's plenty to like about it. Intense gameplay that satisfies, good looking graphics that, even though they don't push the systems, they satisfy, excellent sound and controls, and plenty to keep you coming back. Those who like easy racing games might want to stay clear of this entry, but a little challenge never hurt anyone, right? I would hope so. 
If a little challenge isn't much to you, give this game a shot. I give Sonic Riders a 4 out of 5. Oh, and a quick little addendum, by the way. Remember what I said in the Free Riders review? How much of a minor annoyance, albeit an annoyance nonetheless, how Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Shadow never wear their goggles slash glasses over their eyes while racing, yet the Babylon rogues do? Still stand by that, by the way. Just saying. Alright, hit my ending video now. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, click the big red button below to subscribe. Check out the other links in the description for more cool stuff. And check out the playlist on screen for more content. See you in the next video.